why did they go to such extents to control and diminish the sovereignty of other nations? What could be the possible reason? Well, the reasons are pretty simple. They, they still wanted to benefit economically from the arrangements that they had enjoyed for 100 years. And that is that their domestic economy is dependent on cheap raw materials from Latin America, Africa, and Asia, because those raw materials don't even exist in their country. Uh, they don't have forests anymore. They had coal, which helped them through the Industrial Revolution. But you know, do they have uh, uh, cobalt? Do they have aluminum? Do they have you know, any of the basics for 20th and 21st century economies? No, they don't. So they have to import it. But they don't want to pay the full market rate for it. You know, that's bad for business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want to keep it as cheap as possible. And the best way to do that is to control the source. And uh, at the same time, if you can acquire a source of raw materials, you generally can also exploit cheaper labor costs there. So you can pay one tenth or you know one twentieth of what you would pay uh, domestically. And then you also acquire a market for your finished goods. And this is, you know, this mercantilism has not changed because it's about self-interest. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, no country has any real vision or ideology. It has self-interest. Mm -hmm. And self-interest is what motivates uh, actors in international relations. So it's in the self-interest of rich countries to remain wealthy. They don't like change. The current system worked very well for them. You know, if they're wealthy today, if they're stable today, it's because the world works in a way that was designed by them. Uh, they would never give that up you know, without a fight. So, you know, when they grant independence, you know, without a fight, when they weren't kicked out, physically kicked out by a revolutionary force, for example, the uh, the Dutch were kicked out of Indonesia by uh, local resistance. Uh, that teaches them a lesson. The French were kicked out of Vietnam through violence, through an armed rebellion. Uh, oh, right. But in cases where they granted independence, then it's generally a false independence because it was set on their terms and they did what they needed to maintain their interests. And I think in, in the Indian case, we have, you know, we had a very brutal partition. And what did they get out of it? You know, we didn't get much out of uh, the partition. It was they who did because they got a very loyal client state in the mm -hmm. form of Pakistan, which was very pro-Western, which was open for business for uh, British uh, uh, military officers. For, so for many years after independence, Pakistan's air force was full of British officers. Their uh, army ha had British officers. Uh, and then they became a very reliable American client state. And why? Mm -hmm. They created a wonderful buffer state between India and the Soviet Union and Afghanistan, uh, which was quite pro-Soviet at the time as well, or was, they were worried it was going to become one. So with that, they got what they needed. They created chaos and civil war uh, in their former colony. Uh, the two countries have had four wars, so they keep each other busy. You don't need to... Uh, uh, worry about one of them becoming a regional superpower because whenever it gets too successful, uh, there's the you know client state that will cut them down to size. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content, and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.